Welcome on in to the Utah Blockcast. I'm Steve Bartle, Utah Insider for KSL Sports. Joined today by a special guest. You'll know him. He's the man, the myth, the legend. Guy doing a little bit of everything nowadays. Stevenson Sylvester. <laughs> What's up, Sly? What's up, Bartle? Man, yeah, I'm trying to stay busy, man. You know, the, uh, it, it's crazy. You know, when you're a kid, you wish you were an adult, and then now you're an adult, you're like, what the heck was Dude. I thinking? Yeah, I'm <laughs> telling you. There is so many things you have to worry about as an adult, man. So anybody out there making it, man, I feel for you, and uh, you guys are amazing, amazing. You're you're hustling, man, that's for sure. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. impressive. We were just talking about, you know, your workload and, and all that. You got a lot of... A lot going on. It's impressive, man. You you are doing a lot for the community, doing a lot for Utah sports and athletics. Just impressive, man. It's been really cool to kind of watch your evolution over the course of your career here. Yeah, man. You know what? It's it's great because I'm just having fun with it, right? Yeah. I, I get to be creative and like, oh, I want to do that. Let's let's go do it. It's and here's the thing is I don't choose anything to where you're pressing the easy button. Right. Right. That's there's no real fun in that. But um, I do, I want to do things where I'm helping people out. That's always uh, impactful for me. Um, you know, sometimes it's not lucrative, so you got to, you know, find other ways to make your your your, uh, your money. But, um, you know, for the most part, I'm able to just be around people and uh, help out as much as I can in, in the capacities that I can. And uh, it's, it's, it's really fun, you know, especially yeah. connecting with alumni now, you know, being more ingrained in, in Utah sports and, and really most of the alumni come to me like, yo, do you know about this? Like what? Yeah. And so like um, I become the interim connector of Utah things because like I can get up and, and talk to the administration at the U right. and like figure out the certain things. So a lot of alumni come to me for Utah stuff. So I kind of uh, fill in that role, man. But it's it's awesome. I love to be creative, but at the same time, I keep myself busy because I don't know how to say no. So it's uh, <laughs> one thing my wife is- That's why you're here on the podcast. You didn't know how to say no. No, nah, man. You're, you're, the, you're the best, Bartle, man. And I, I know I had to stop by, man. I appreciate you. <laughs> well, this is- No, and I appreciate it. Uh, you know, it's been uh, something I've wanted to do for a long time. Just never had the courage to to say, hey, man, you want to join me on the podcast? And you see how easy it was? I, it's and you know easy. what? We were at the game- and I gave you my number. You already had it. I already it. had it. You already had it, bro. Just call me. <laughs> I had it this whole time. Yeah. Oh, man. And, uh, no, so I, I appreciate you hopping on. And, obviously, you know, with you hopping on, I think, uh, you know, this will be a good good opportunity for us to just kind of talk about the season that's that's been so mm. far for Utah football. You know, certainly, uh, you know, there's been some some good things, been a lot of tough struggles and things that we need to, to dive into. And I figured, you know, there's nobody better than than uh, than Sly himself to to join me to just kind of talk through it all. And so obviously we want to you know break down the season um, and sort of assess just what's been going on with Utah football because I think we both agree that this is not the season anybody saw coming, anybody expected, anybody believed Utah was going to have, and, and yet here we are in in the bye week and Utah is four and four. Uh, with four straight losses, and so, you know, it's uh, just a time to assess some things and and figure out how Utah can move forward. So, um, you know, let's let's start with the the big big stuff first. And I think, you know, when we're talking about the big stuff, obviously that centers around you know the quarterback position, Cam Rising, um, the offensive coordinator situation with Andy Ludwig stepping down recently and Mike Bajakian being elevated to that new role um with this season does it royal does it really boil down to those Gatorade water coolers and how it's impacted Utah football this season with Cam Rising's injury no and here we can sit here and berate people all day right mm -hmm. um and 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 for me um I'm victim of this too. So uh, just because I say it doesn't mean that I'm not better than somebody else. Right. Cause I would, I would most likely do the same thing. Um, it's, it's not the cam rising missing uh, fingers. I think the, the issue was we put so much, we put everything into that basket. Okay. Right. Yeah. And 
here's the thing. The mindset was everything was in that basket, but we we, we really had more. Yeah. But the thing is, is is like you really you you divulge so much into that one thing that it just killed morale. And that can't happen. You right. know, uh, one person cannot define someone's season. And and for that to happen to this football team, that was the sad thing, right? Like, I was trying in the offseason to talk about everybody else. Like, we knew Cam Rise. He was getting so much love. Yeah. National pub. I didn't need to do any more for Cam Rising. But I was just noticing all of the other weapons and, and, and essential personnel that we had on this football team. That if we didn't have Cam Rising, we're in a better position than we ever have been. Right. Right? Yeah, you're looking at the talent on the roster. We talked a, a lot about it on, on the podcast here is that you know, on paper, and paper. knowing yes. what, what we've seen from these guys in years past, this is the most talented team ever seen up at Utah. Supposedly, but Supposedly, here's the thing. Paper, and yep. and that's and that's the paper, right? Yeah. And and that doesn't mean that people can work together. And in in the game of football where it's the ultimate team sport, more than soccer, more than yeah. baseball, more than basketball, more than hockey, football, everybody needs to be on the same page. There is no way that one person can take the puck and go coast to coast, ISO and score. You can't do that in football. You have to have a CQ exchange. You have to hand the ball off, right? You have to be able to receive the kick from the 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 kicker on the other team and you need blocks. If 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 your blockers didn't block, you're not getting out into the open. You can't go LeBron and go coast to coast in football. It just doesn't happen. You need everybody. Yeah. And so putting those pieces together, right? Um you could say uh, Utah did everything that they needed to do this offseason, right? I, I said coming in, I was like, Utah has no excuse, and we don't. Nope. And and so that's I was talking today. It, we're talking about things. We're not making excuses for Utah. Utah did this to themselves, and they got to get themselves out. It's as simple as that. But um, we uh, putting all the pieces together, going out and getting a Caleb Loner, going out and getting Damian Alford, going out and getting a uh, Dorian Singer, Tayshawn Lyons, uh, even a Sam Heward as a backup quarterback. What did you go get Sam Heward for? Right. Right? Yeah. Like, you went out and did these things, right? So you made all the moves, but your mindset was all in one basket, and you let that kill everything. And that's the most disappointing thing about this season. Right, because I mean, Cam Rising only played what? Uh, if we don't, Six quarters. let's not count the Arizona State game. He was hampered. It looked crazy. Obviously, yep. But with that, he played three quarters. Crazy, right? Yep. And so, having those three quarters dump your whole season like that's crazy to me. And 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 that's where I'm like, we were in this position last year. Right, Cam Rising was coming in. Nate Nate Johnson, Bryson Barnes was fighting for that QB two position or whoever's going to be until Cam Rising came back because we played that roller coaster last year. How do we not let that happen again? And that's that's what's so interesting and, and fascinating is that you just went through this same very same situation the year before turmoil, and it seemed like you did things because you learned from them. Right, you mm-hmm. learned from what you experienced last year in the sense that you added weapons around the quarterback position you went out you landed a, a, a premier talent at quarterback in Isaac Wilson then you dipped into the portal again and got another kid in Sam Heward a former five-star kid so which speaks to his potential and mm-hmm. talent hasn't worked out for him yet throughout his college career but you know he showed flashes and, and things that you felt confident in and optimistic about uh, in terms of his ability to come in and, and help and it seemed like they had learned their lesson right from last season with all of the drama and 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 turmoil as you said with with uh with the with the team and the quarterback situation um it's just surprising that it hasn't as you said everything was put into one basket and and i think that is where Every, utah didn't learn bro you could look in any industry any situation that's where people fall If you only have one thing and you get a roadblock at that one thing and now you can't do anything else because you didn't prepare the right way, you're stuck. In any business, you can see that scenario not working out. 
And so, like, for me, I was thinking with the moves that we made, with the communication that I even had with the coaching staff, with everybody else, that that wasn't the case this year. Right. Yeah. And I add to that, too. Right. But but here's the thing that, you know, Utah coaches, Utah administration, Utah players, right, speaking to them, they cannot be mad at anybody's frustration from this season. One, because everything is closed off. It is Fort Knox at the University of Utah. Yeah. We can't see practices. We can't see people's development. We're only privy to the information that is uh, that is passed on to us. Yep. And so now we haven't seen Sam Heward. We haven't seen Isaac Wilson. We've just been told by Coach Witt. We've just been told by everybody else on the football team that this is what it's supposed to be. And so now that we're seeing that, we're just like, what are y'all even talking about? What is going on? Do y'all know? Yeah. And and so now we're speaking to their incompetence. Yeah. Like, and, and, and it's like, you guys told us that this was it. Why are we not seeing these things right. that you talked about? That you told us that we were right. Like, true freshman or not, you named him QB2. Why was he named QB2? If he can't yeah. do it right. But, right. And, and that's my thing. It's like, and I believe in Isaac Wilson. Yeah. Right. I've watched this kid the last three years in high school and his development year to year, let alone game to game this year. I was like, this kid could be something. But you got to understand the quarterback position, the mental fragility of that position is crazy. It's insane. And if you do anything, you want to protect the mental of your young guy. And that was my whole thing. I was like, Isaac Wilson's great. He's definitely a QB of the future, but he needs to sit this year. Sit behind Cam Rising. Watch because Andy Ludwig's system is no joke. Right. It There's is completely it. complicated. Yep. There's so many things than what's on paper. What's on paper isn't exactly everything that you need to know about Andy Ludwig's system. Right. And those are things like, I mean, we're watching with the Steelers right now, you know, Justin uh, Fields and, and, and Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's coming in. There are some things in his experience that he's being able to exploit and, and utilize in this team, getting complimentary defense uh, on the other side of the bill and uh, on the side of the ball. And they're just making it work in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, whatever contract situation that's holding Justin Fields out, yada, yada, yada. But look at the communication between those two on the sideline. They are talking about what's going on on the field. I'm lipping reading, yeah. by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. They are talking we about are. what's yeah, going yeah. on on the field. Justin Field is 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 like Isaac Wilson to me as far as like I'm hungry. A young quarterback. I want this. Himself. That's yeah. Isaac Wilson. Yeah. And you put him in this bad position. Right, because you named him QB two, to where he's trying so hard, he's trying to force this square peg into this round hole, until it saws down into a <laughs> yeah. into a circle, yeah. because you're forcing it so hard, it's gonna mold itself into a circle. But it's it's hard, right? And that's that's Isaac Wilson right now, and so they're not doing him justice right now. But my thing is, it's 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 what this administration has to deal with. They're so afraid of losing guys to the portal, to uh, other NIL deals, Mm -hmm. to people being cancers on the team, that they have to do what they haven't traditionally done and play into these guys. Instead of holding true to who you are, I have to play into this NIL. I have to play into this transfer portal stuff. And it sucks. Yeah. And you can see that 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 is not Utah we're seeing out on the field. No, it's it's not. It, it's you know when you talk to people that have followed Utah football closely over For the years, years. You know I've gotten a lot of texts and stuff that this is it's unrecognizable at times. Yeah. You know what this team is and and how they're playing and and it's been super surprising. And it's not all as as we've talked about. It's not all on the quarterback. It's not all on the quarterback situation. But as as you were pointing out, Sly, is that you know he is a freshman quarterback yeah. and. There's a lot of inexperience there, and the only way to get experience is to go through it. You you get the test first, and then the lesson later. That's something that's a phrase that I've picked up this season, and that's what Isaac is going through. And, and right now, you know, unfortunately, defenses are able to, you know, game plan, game plan. Well, he's so young, things. yeah, that he can't adjust in there on his own. Right. He has like this was called. I have to run with what's called. Yep. 
right? I'm seeing something different, though, right? Because offense is like, you don't know what the defense is going to line up with. You don't know what they game planned for you coming in. But if you're Aaron Rodgers, Cam Rising, a veteran quarterback, you at the line of scrimmage, I know that this zone power read right now is not going to work. Right. Let me check out of that. Let me go into something else. Let me feel more comfortable. Let me set other people up. A simple audible, a simple hot route would change a lot of things. And you're asking an 18-year-old freshman to do that with these grown men on the field. Yeah. And and that's that's been the issue to me is that it's not that this team has suddenly gotten exponentially worse over the last four weeks mm-hmm. they have because that's what the product has been but it, it's it's more that they've just become more constrict restricted in what they're able to do that defenses can now game plan to yeah. take it away it, right? I, it, that's what you want to do as, as a defensive guy yeah. that's what i wanted that's what you want you yeah. want it confined into a small yeah. space you bring the safeties low eight ten yards off the ball your utah's offense is basically 10 yards deep and you can you can Take it away, right? Mm-hmm. With safeties ten yards deep, and and that, and just play downhill. And, and you that's know what, what sucks? Doing. We can't even throw a flare route. We can't even <laughs> throw an out route because the mental confidence is shot. That's so, man. That's it's tough, right? Like you're excited to have a true freshman step up, be named QB two, right? That's exciting when you've got a star quarterback that you can go to and, and count on. Um, but when he goes down, now that true freshman is the spotlight's on forced him. him in there. And the spotlight is is but f- fair. I, st- I want to know what, what prompted them to make that. Like, was it in, in a, a, a fear of transfer portal stuff? Like, why did you guys name him QB2 if he wasn't ready? Or did he show that he was ready? Yeah. And then now, like, uh, we just we just don't know. We can get a lot of opinion. You can't get nothing from a spring game. Spring game is so... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's just trash. But, you like, know. but we're not <laughs> you know what we're not able to see practices. Right. We're not able to see other scrimmages. And so we can't get a, a, a good justification if he showed well early and he's just, you know, it's it's getting that freshman lull or something. Mm-hmm. We can't we can't give you that. But you've told us XYZ. So again, why? Why did you do that? And so, like, uh, there's there's so many things with it. I don't envy any of the coaches' situation. It's tough. It's tough. Tough spot. It's tough, but man. This is also why you're compensated. Yeah, the way that you are. You, you are compensated well, and that was my thing with Andy Ludwig. You are compensated the best in the nation. Yeah. Right. And you can adjust. That yeah. So let's let's dive into that. Right. Andy Ludwig's this decision of his own volition <laughs> to step down. Um, you know, obviously. The offense has has struggled over the last four weeks, and it's gotten worse. Uh, you know that TCU performance was one of the just the worst offensive outings I've ever seen. It, it was it was bad. You know, you you crossed the forty, you crossed the fifty, I think once outside of the touchdown, and then got throw, sacked next time, and then and got you're right back, back. Yeah. in your own territory. Um, and Ludwig's resignation um, led to Bajakian stepping up with. With Ludwig, I feel like it's not that he was necessarily the problem, but if you're not able to provide the answers, being compensated at the at the level that he was, you know, that's what you're paid to do. Is you've got to figure out a way to get more out of your true freshman quarterback and your offense, because this isn't going to work. You can't score seven points on your home turf, and that's that was the the difficult thing. Was Andy Ludwig was two great. home games in a row? Yeah, brutal. You got a full stadium? <laughs> Brutal. Right. Yeah. And so, like, I'll never forget what my linebacker coach told me. You know, I was in the, in, in Pittsburgh. Um, I had uh, Lamar Woodley, James Harrison, uh, James Ferrier, Lawrence Timmons. Um, you All, know, some all-time names. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in that meeting room. Yeah. Right. And these guys got paid. Right, highest linebackers being outside linebackers being paid. James Harrison won defensive MVP two years before that, and Lamar Whitley was treading that way. Um, these guys got paid, right? And uh, he always said this, and he said this is this is not just football. This is life too. Like, be careful about getting paid a lot. Yeah. Be careful about getting that big bag. Your expectation is up there too. Yeah. That may be why Cam Rice is getting so much scrutiny. 
Yeah. Right. You're getting paid and you ain't did nothing for it. Right. Yeah. You may have worked hard in the off season to come back from your injury. You may have done all of this and that, but you got to produce. Mm-hmm. You and do. That, that's on any level. You got to produce. And if you're not producing, they're going to look at you're being compensated well enough to make this happen. Right. Andy Ludwig. You're being compensated to assess these quarterbacks and make these decisions to name QB2, QB3, QB4, right? You're making these decisions, right? If these guys aren't enough, you had enough time in the offseason, like, we need somebody else. Yeah. But you didn't. You went out, you got Dorian Singer. You went out, you got Damian Alford. You got Tayshaun Lyons. You got all these other uh, assets, Carson Ryan, all this stuff. But... Should we have invested more in the QB position? Because what are those positions without a QB? Yeah, nothing. I mean, we're seeing it now, right? You're it's, seeing it's a you're, struggle. You're seeing Dorian Singer frustrated as crap. One, because these refs don't call pass interference for nothing. I'm saying, yo, hey, you're a defensive guy. No, but like, <laughs> even though it, that takes away from the game, it's kind of like these NBA guys talking about we were so physical in the 80s and yeah. 90s, right? I'm just like, you weren't playing ball. Yeah. We were ball out ball. on the courts playing street ball is what that yeah. was. So I, I, I like it, that's not basketball. That's not athleticism. That's literally somebody who can't move their feet, fouling hard, and that's not ball to me. And so like it, it's getting to that with with the way this pass interferes. But it's both ways. Offense needs to adjust. Yeah. Defense is holding the crap out of us. Push off. We can push off. Yes. <laughs> They're letting push. I've seen, I saw, I forgot who. Offensive pass interference does not exist. It doesn't. Uh, offensive pass interference and defensive right now. In the unless Big 12, it doesn't. Unless you're setting a pick. So adjust. Jeez. That's totally fine. Just adjust. Right? Run routes that I can use the open field to where he can't hold me. To where I swipe down, he can't hold me. I run away from him. And the only way he can stop me is by tripping me. Run routes like that. Right? Mm-hmm. Or... If I'm going to run a curl route, push off. Yeah. They're not calling it. Give a little nudge. Right? But we're we're not adjusting like that, and that's so frustrating for me. And so, like, uh, you're seeing Dorian Singer extremely frustrated because he's not getting, you know, the ball out. He's getting targeted. Don't get he me is. wrong. He's getting his targets. Yeah. You know, but the ball can't get there. <laughs> the ball can't get there. It's either too low, too high, too outside, whatever. Um, and so it's making it very difficult for him to where he's like, I got to find a way to impact the game. Let me be a punt returner. He's not a punt returner. I'm no. saying that right now. No. He needs. I, I, I've seen that the last couple of games. I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to be effective in some kind of way. If we can't get the ball to me on offense, let me try to be dynamic in the in return game. Returners have to have a certain mindset. You have to be cautious. You have to be sure. And you have to be, you know, somebody who can tell, like, I need to fair catch this. I need to live another day. Yeah. I need not to I need not to run backwards and lose yards and put us a put a freshman quarterback inside of our five instead of at our twelve. <laughs> I need not to do these things, uh, and you need to have that mindset as a returner, and Dorian, Dorian Singer doesn't have that right now. What he's trying to do is he's trying to make a play, and it's hurting us. Yeah. And so all of this, everybody's that square peg in the round hole. We're trying. Look, I'm on the sidelines. I'm not saying nobody's not getting effort. They're giving effort. Very much, yeah. It's just the focus is in the wrong places. And, and, and I say this, guys are on different levels. There's guys like uh, Teo Johnson, like a Makai Bernard, who's freaking giving everything. And there's guys who like, oh, man, we don't have Cam Rising. Ugh. Yeah. And, and, and so, like, on the ultimate team sport, you can't have guys on different levels. Yeah. Everybody needs to be here. And that's the job of the coaches to keep everybody here. But with today's day and age, how do you do that? It's so tough. And I think, like, this is – it's been an interesting start to this – to, just to the conversation, right, with where this has gone. Because I do think that's a, a big issue right now is that they're not all centered on on the most important thing, which is winning. Right? I do think there are personal agendas, you know, that are impacting, you know, performance of certain individuals and of the which impacts the unit, which impacts the rest of the team. And I think that is 
you know, Mike, Kai Bernard had made his comments in the postgame presser of he knows what the issue is, and but he's not going to talk about it, but he knows what it is. As a former player, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I don't. I wish I knew because I, I think there's tons of issues, so I there don't are. know exactly what he's talking about. But I believe that that is, when you talk about what is the biggest thing that you can lump things together in that, that just in, encapsulates it all, it's, as you as you kind of alluded to it, they're they're on different levels. They're on different pages. They're on different wavelengths. They're not all centered and focused on the most important thing, which is winning. Right. Play you to know, play. Win the next down. Win the next down. Execute your job as best you can on that given play, and just have that mindset that that winning above all else, team first mentality. And it's tough too because you know now Utah. Money Parks, his injury is is tough. You know he's a productive source. He's a source of production. You can count on him. Where you're gonna feel his impact hurt the most is just that quiet leadership. He always had that team first mentality. He was always willing to run the routes to set others up. And now, you know that's a question mark. Who's gonna be that guy? Who's gonna be the guy that's willing to run the vertical route to set up a dig or to set up the the deep out for a Dorian Singh or a Brant Keithy? Who's gonna be that guy? You know, are they going to run with the same intensity that money did? And, you know, it's tough to lose another leader like that. And, you know, Makai's doing his best. He's stepped up in more ways than Just I think so anybody weird these last two games, right? He's been top in the nation. He was top six in the nation in rushing. And in the last two games, we haven't, we've reduced his carries. Yeah. What is Which going on? Surprising. That's what is so going surprising. on? He's the only bright spot you have on offense. And I, I, you know, and I do think this gets back to more schematic talk, but I do think the what we're seeing with the reduction in his carries and attempts is that teams are loading up to take away the run, yeah. right? And so and you're then just running forcing in into Isaac. What do you got? A brick wall, and that's that's tough for him. So you've but you've got to find a way to still keep him involved. And what do you do? You do what we did when we our only touchdown in TCU, stretch the dang stretch ball. The field. Get Stretch the ball. It. Let money run him. Yeah. Run money's fast. <laughs> yeah. We. It's been proven. <laughs> you gotta throw the ball the deep. Even even if you don't complete the pass, you make the defense think that oh they're gonna take a shot. Yeah. I can't dig my feet into the running game. I gotta be prepared to get beat deep. Yep. I'm the last line of defense. I can't let money beat me. Right. And if you do that. You run a draw play where money can run these DBs and linebackers stretch them out, and then he got yards and, and, and stuff up there. There's different things you can do, but if you never run a play over 10 yards, defense ain't going to be scared of that. No. We're not, defenses aren't scared of what we're able to do on offense. No, not at all. They're licking their chops. I know I would be. <laughs> yeah. They're on their toes and they're able to right. just play downhill. Right. And that is, I've said this before, but that. That has to just be the most exciting thing as a defender is when you can just play on your toes with no fear of. of it, getting go go watch hurt. the Sugar Bowl. That's 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 what it, that's what we were right. We yep. were we weren't we we put Alabama behind the ball twenty one zero and we were able to dig in. Just go. We were able to dig in. Yeah, and that's that like dude that just has to be the most exciting thing for defensive players. Just to all right, let's get after it. Let's go. Let's get into the back. What was great about we that? We started with the game like we were up twenty one zero. The yeah. way Coach Anderson was calling blitzes, like we just started that way, and that was just, and we were just able to handle that. But we were such a a, a tight knit group, mm. and we understood there were things within the defense. And I, I kind of teach um, kind of young guys now um, that I'm training. Uh, I teach them more of the game, but I'm just like, look, it doesn't matter who's doing it as long as it's done. Yeah. Right. As so in uh, a blitz, a five man blitz, it doesn't matter who those five are. Are the other six guys covering what needs to be covered in a cover two? That's a five under two deep. No matter who those five guards are, that could be a D tackle dropping into the hook. But there's the hook is covered. Right, I, I've had that in Pittsburgh. Our freaking nose tackle, Casey Hampton, Casey Hampton dropped yeah. down into a three receiver <laughs> hook. You think a quarterback expected that? Nope. I've seen him interceptable. But are all of those responsibilities taken care of in some capacity? It doesn't matter who it is, right? Mm -hmm. And and so, like, that's where a defense 
is and we were just so in tune with that with like that wasn't the exact cover two called but Sean Smith may have had a, a deep half or a deep third and he's like Rojo I feel this cover me right he's like I'm gonna jump this I'm gonna go take a short route if my receiver goes deep cover me right yeah that's the chemistry that we had mm. on that team right Mike Wright knew, knew he, I didn't even have to talk to Mike Wright He's like, oh shit! Dude. This is this is that this, this is that formation. Slides right. slides gonna blitz this. He's supposed to be back in the hook. Yeah. He's gonna blitz this. But Mike had my back. He knew exactly what I was gonna do, right? We had that type of chemistry. Yeah, and you need that. But that takes years to develop. That's what I, I, I wanted to to get to. You know, this defense has it's received a lot of criticism, which I think is unfair for the most part because yeah. the defense is still. I mean, you look at the scoreboard. Uh, you know, it's there's been breakdowns and mistakes over the the eight games, but they're still limiting teams to all time lows yeah. in scoring. Not all time lows, but it, season lows yeah. in scoring, and that's a product of good overall team defense. Do you feel like the defense has that sort of chemistry that you guys had? Do you feel no. like they have another level they can get to, and is that chemistry key to that? Yeah, yeah, I I do think that there's another level. These guys are great. Absolutely love all of them. The D tackles are awesome. Samote, Kiano, and 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 Junior are just amazing. Even the young guys um, that are coming in and replacing them. The D ends are great. Connor O'Toole came back last game. You saw him make tons Instant of plays. Um, you know, Van has been solid all year. Him and Logan. Logan coming back from his injury last year. He's just he blows me away. Blows me away. He's been right? doing so Nine amazing. Months. Yeah, and he was back on the field playing at a great level, and he's continued to do it all season. He's long. played great this year. Yeah. He looks so athletic. He's strong in the run game. He's impacting. He's a uh, running plays. I know people are worried, like, oh, we're not getting that many impact plays on the defense, sacks, turnovers, which is true, you know. Yeah. But it's also extremely hard, right? Because you're not getting complimentary football from your offense. What you want to do is being like, I want to make sure my job is done. Yeah. So I want to make sure I tackle these guys. I've been a part of defenses like this where we haven't been able to create a lot of turnovers. So I understand this. I was like, because when you go for turnovers, you go to force fumbles, you go for interceptions, you go, you're taking a risk you are. on those times. Yeah. Right. And so here's the thing. You're not getting nothing from your offense. If I go take a risk and miss, we're even further behind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you're just feeling the pressure on defense so much that you're tight. You're not playing loose. Lander Bard is not playing loose. He's having a, he's he's having such a subpar year for me. Yeah. And it, it's little things when I watch him. I'm just like, yo, what's going on? And I I do think you said you know he's tight, and I think he's pressing. I think he feels that pressure. I think he knows yeah. that people want and had high expectations. Well, he had it for himself. He and he had him. Yeah. Right. And and that's great. You want guys to have high expectations for yourself, but at the same time, he's still trying to fit this square peg in a yeah. circle hole right yeah. here. And, and and so like he's got to adjust. He's got to calm down. But he's putting a lot of pressure on himself too, which I totally understand. As a competitor, you got to do that. Yep. But like, it, it turns out to what's happening this year, where you're missing some of the easiest things. Your eyes aren't right. You're so tight. You're so this and that. You're not open anymore. And, it, and that's why, like, I love psychology and, yeah. and, and, like, the brain and how all that stuff works, man. If you really dig, dig deep into all this stuff, you really understand um, how certain things can be affected. Your mentality is huge, huge. in sports. Huge. All sports. In football. Especially football. Especially football. You know, everybody says it all the time, right? Like, football is so physical, yada, yada, yada. But to be good at this game, it's 85 to 90% mental. Absolutely. As much as you see somebody get hit, you're in a car crash every single time you hit somebody. So essentially, in a 60 to 70 play game, you're in 60 car crashes, especially for the D line and O line who hit every yeah. play. Yeah. Right. And and and, and so like, your mental has. There's got to be a reason Ray Lewis played 17 years. There's got to be a reason James Ferrer played 17 years at middle linebacker. There's got to be a reason Reggie White played that many years. Bruce Smith played that many years. Right. They're smart. They know how to get around it. They understand it, and they were focused at all times, and they knew exactly what to do, what to get out of themselves, right? They're so sure. And so, like, 
You know, you're not always going to have the greatest games. This is, hasn't been the greatest season for Lander, so I'm sure he's going to have a, a comeback year last year. I, I'm a big fan of Lander. I think oh, yeah. he's absolutely awesome. Um, he's underachieved this year, and I think he knows that. He's had a lot of pressure. Corinne Reed has been out since the second game and, and really messed up everything. He's had yeah. to have the green die. So he came into the season uh, with this understanding that I'm going to play free. I'm going to play the offline backer. I'm not going to have to do all that to where he's had to do it. That's a big change. It's a big change. Big right, change. I've had to do that with Pittsburgh, where you know I'm playing all the other three linebackers, and I wasn't the Buck linebacker who's calling on play, setting everything up, and then me having to jump in there and do that. I got to worry about the safeties. I got to get the the D line. Everybody is looking to you. Yeah, right. Everybody. It's a different. You. It's yeah. a. Di- and if you're not, if you're not conditioned to, to do that. to be yep. that, you know, it's a, it's a hard adjustment. Yeah. So Kareem's injury this year. I think made Lander suffer in his position this year. I'm with you there. I buy that because, as as you as you said, that responsibility it's huge, right? Mm-hmm. Because now you you're not only thinking about what you've got to do and, and you're the what quarterback maybe, of the defense. You've got yeah. to worry about everybody, right? You got to make sure everybody's on that same page, and that's a lot for right. a player like Lander who who has been trained and and, and has practiced as the not that guy, right? Mm-hmm. He's not that guy. Or hasn't been that guy. He can be that guy when he's practiced and conditioned to be that guy. Um, fascinating with the defense. I do think a lot of it is mental. Um, you know, I think a lot of guys are pressing because you know they're they're not seeing those turnovers. They're not seeing the havoc plays, but they're still playing good defense. And you know, to take that next step, I do think you know they they need to to generate more of those. Havoc plays. They got to score themselves. They, 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 they it, that, that would change. Yeah. You guys would see. Like, if we do take those risks and we get those risks, we, as a defense, you get frustrated when you do get turnovers and you don't see nothing on the other side. It's hard. Right? Yeah. Especially when, especially when you get a turnover in your red zone. So the, the other team is about to score, but you get a turnover. Right? Just like a TCU game. They went all the way down the field on the first series and they fumbled the snap, but you got the ball and you gave it back to your offense. What happened on that? Our offense did nothing and punted back to them. So now TCU only had a 60 yard field. Yeah. That is, that as, as a defense, that's like, oh, my turnover was for nothing. It was nothing. Right? You couldn't even flip the field. Yep. And, and that that happened in Houston too, twice. Yeah, twice. The line stands. And so you just understand the, 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 the the mental grind that this yes. group is going through it's difficult to still perform at the level that they are uh, it's it's impressive top honestly. 3 in the nation in third down conversion that's that's crazy that's crazy yeah. yeah and and yet there's there's still demand for more and that's so much you know to ask of this defense but with the way that the offense the lack of progress that we've seen what can be done on the offensive side of the ball to help them find production to at least give the defense, you know, some help, right? Because that's what that's where we're at with this is that, you know, you can count on the defense to play tough. Um, we just – Utah just needs an offense that can complement it. And, right. and where do they find that? How do they find it? How do they generate that with – their quarterback situation being what it is. Now Isaac Wilson and Brandon Rose in a little bit of a renewed quarterback battle. How do they find that? I have a lot of opinion on this, and we could probably have a whole nother podcast <laughs> another podcast about it. Yeah. Um, but literally, I think we just got to simplify things. And, and and here's the thing. Simplify things isn't as easy as just saying it, right? Like. Yeah. Uh, I think we fell in love with having these crazy offensive terminologies and calls, right? Just simply, like the touchdown that we scored early in the game, the brand Keith on the second play of the game, right? We talked about earlier in this podcast was defenses are able to sink their feet in and just try to stop the run. It was a tight end screen. Mm-hmm. The execution was perfect. Beautiful. Right. Because you took advantage of the defense's Aggression. aggressiveness, right? Did they're give everybody's giving? How many times were we in zero coverage? You know, uh, from that uh, ever since Isaac Wilson took over, 
we got zero yeah. coverage. All Oklahoma like State's most zero coverage. That's all the freaking time. Yep. Right. That's why Brand Keith got that touchdown against Oklahoma State. Yep. You're in zero coverage, and he has definite advantage of him. But Isaac Wilson got time in the pocket to be able to throw that up into the end zone and make that happen. Right. You gotta take. You gotta loosen this defense yeah. up. And for me, I and this was. I'm sorry. I told Coach with this. I'm like, you gotta run it through. Run it through Makai. Yeah. And it's not just running the football. Makai is dangerous, extremely versatile back, and your best offensive asset right now. Dorian Singer is great, but he can't get off these presses. Yeah, and 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 the physicality of the of the Big Twelve in the secondary and what the refs are allowing, we can't get around that, right? Yep. I would run the heck out of Makai Bernard, or if you want to use Dorian Singer, get him off the ball. Make him your Z receiver yep. and put him in the third receiver where he's off the ball where they can't press him and he gets free releases. I think that would help. You got to do something <laughs> to, to do help. different things because, like, yeah. I see a lot of man coverage. And even in zone, like, remember what was a guaranteed third down two years ago when we had Cole Fotheringham? Just a little he sat down there. right there, four or five out. yards. Yep. Every single time, because they would run zone against us on third down, you see Cole Fotheringham sit down right. It was a guaranteed first down almost. Yep. If it was third and four, third and five, you have all these weapons. You got Brad Keithy, Dalton Kincaid. Um, you ha- you have Devon Bailey and all this stuff. They were worried about other things. Lowly Cole Fotheringham sits right there in the hole, guaranteed first down. Yeah. How easy is that throw? Super easy. Those are simple things that yeah. we can do. But you got to get the defense to loosen up. You, they're so tight to the line of scrimmage. That interception by Brandon Rose, where was the defense? They were all in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Where's where's somebody stretching these safeties? Halsey made these plays all season. I was studying tape on him. He is an outstanding safety for Houston. Uh, that He made that interception. That very interception that he made, he's done that plenty of times just this season. Impressive. Right, diving, stretch them out. Yeah, take a shot down. Somebody, the field. Some, yeah. your check down's gonna be there, right? It's gonna be an option to where that that tight end comes up. If I'm getting man coverage, then I work. If I'm getting zone, I sit. That's just a feel. And as a quarterback, you can get the ball out quick with that. Even with our offensive line not pass protecting that great, you can get a you can get a quick pass right there. You recognize its zone. Your tight end recognizes its zone. That's good. That's why we can pick that up, right? Yeah. But stretch this defense out. That's interesting. Um, you know, because going back and watching quarterback play over the last couple games, one thing that has stuck out is that it's it's taking the quarterbacks a long time to get the ball out. There are opportunities to get the ball out pretty quickly. There are opportunities, money on crossers. You know he's not going to be available moving forward. But there are guys getting open early on. It's just the quarterbacks aren't seeing it quick enough. Yeah, and, and that's, that's play design, right? That's yeah. that's 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 the coaching. That's Mike Bajakian, right? You got to come in here, Bajakian. Uh, he's got to come in here. What is your first two reads? What is your pre-snap read? Right. So here's the thing: you have your route combination, mm-hmm. right? And since we're not pass protecting that much, make two people stay. So you only have three people to worry about in route. That's crazy. Right? Yeah. So do that. Right? What are you seeing pre-snap? Are you seeing zone? Are you seeing man? What do you feel like it's going to be? Because a lot of people, you know, do, um, you know, uh, bluff coverage. Right? What are you seeing? Okay, cool. Hike the ball. What are you seeing? Now. Yeah. It's got to be. Go to that one route. And it should definitely go off of your first pre-snap read. I say this a lot of times in the high school rankings and over the last few years, people's pre-snap read ability is how you can tell you're a good quarterback. But they need to be coached on what they're looking at pre-snap. Yeah. And that's, that is when we're talking about what's been the biggest difference uh, or the, the biggest loss with Cam was that Cam was able to do yes. that yes, pre, very much so. very much snap so. read, and he knew where to go with the ball, before, had a pretty good idea. Before, before the ball was yep. snapped. Yep. Those touchdowns you see at SUU, he did a great job of pre-snap reading. I know exactly uh, this guy's going to be open. I set this up. I look left. I move that safety. I come right back to Brand Keith. He's a Oops. touchdown wide open, yep. right? That's, what, that's a pre-snap reading, right? You can see it. You can tell it. You just because they were FCS doesn't mean that's the same. You can do that same thing with D one, right? 
But what are we teaching these guys? What are they looking at pre-snap? Yeah. Right? So file down that big Andy Ludwig playbook and, this, and, and get your certain plays. When we're talking about simplifying the game, this is what we're talking yes, about, right? Yes, exactly. This is, this is it. Exactly. Is That's what I meant. Yes. Narrow down the game to, hey, this is your read. These are going to be the defenders in mm-hmm. conflict. Depending on how they play it, this is where you go with the ball. Or if they play it this way, this is where you go with the ball. This is what we mean by simplifying the game. Right. And uh, and I hope that Bajakian is able to do that with a bye week. To, yes. Yeah, you know, he needs to, a bye week. He does need <laughs> yeah. a bye week to, to just really ingrain it in these guys what he's trying to accomplish moving forward the, this final month of the season. Um, you know, it's these guys need a lot of work. You know, Isaac, Brandon, they need work because they are an experience. And they I have, have to that. say, I like Bajakian on the sideline. I do too. At, at Houston, I was there and just seeing him. I hear that offense, the, what happened? We scored on the second play of the game. That was just a great play call against aggression. Yeah. You know, we struggled through the game though, but I like him being on the sideline. We just have a dejected morale right now, so it's hard. Right. But like after we scored that touchdown, there was so much energy. Defense came out. We did a great job after that, but we got to keep piling on after yes. that. So, you know, hopefully this week, Bajakian can get in. But I actually liked him being on the sideline and talking with the QBs, talking with each position group too. right after their series. Yes, because I like that. It's it's teaching. He's teaching at these the guys. same time. Yes. And, and that's this what is these what you should be. Need. We're going to call this again. Yeah. And when we do, pay attention to this. This is yes. what you're seeing. They've got the iPads now. Now it's about coaching him up in the moment right yes. now that he's seen something and they've played it now we can go to him i i do like the fact that bajakian was on the sideline and hopefully that will continue to be the case because that's what i feel isaac brandon that's what they need right now is they need somebody to teach them and coach them maybe that wasn't ludwig's that's not MO. that's not his style you know he's a guy when he's got his guys and he knows that he know the offense and that's he's the bad great. part right and 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 I, I just feel Bajakian, you know, if he is a genuine teacher, a genuine coach, a guy that can really teach these guys, I think that's what these guys, these these two young quarterbacks, that's what they need right now is somebody to teach them the game right now because they don't have the five, four, five years, seasons of experience, seven, seven that, that Cam had, right? They're they're learning right now. They're going through the lessons right now, and, and that is more of what they need than anything else. I completely agree. Mm. Man, completely agree. Wow. Well, Sly, any other thoughts, man? I, this has been fascinating because we've we've hit on a number of different things. Um, I want to go back to something that we opened up with and just kind of the big picture, right? Instead of putting their a everything into one basket, right? When we're talking about Cam, what's the opposite of that? How what? How do they adjust? How do they change that to where it's an investment across the board where they're putting what they can into everybody on the team. How does the, how do you make that adjustment? You know what do you know what I'm asking? Like instead of putting everything into that one cam rising basket. They just did it too late this year. Is that what it is? They they did it too late. They they canceled cam rising out too late. They didn't let it linger like it did last year. Yeah. But a lot of these guys that were on the team last year felt that same stuff that happened last year. And so that's why the dejecting, it, it, it's more, it was more substantial this year than last year because they went through it all last, all last year. year. And it's just, and it's just yeah. like they got those same feelings coming up yeah. this year yeah. and it just hit harder this year, I felt like. But they did, it was like, okay, Cam's out, good. But that was after the Arizona State game, right? And and I like them doing that. I just, I really felt like we should have did that earlier not keep playing Cam could come back next week. Cam's doing this and that. Oh, Cam's warming up and, and, and this and that. Isaac Wilson didn't know he was starting until three minutes before the game. That's BS. Yeah. Yeah, that's not the way to do it. And so and so that that was hard. And 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 um I don't know how much of that was Cam. I don't know how much of that was the training staff. I don't know the coaching staff, but that was hard on this whole team. Yep. That say that little decision of the Cam wonder messed up everything as far as like we don't know what we're doing we don't even know what we're saying in the media what we're supposed to say in the media in our interviews like like we don't know what's going it's not black and white right instead of lining up and beating an opponent we're sitting over here trying to play uh media play and worrying about leaks and uh, like who cares if people know that cam rising's not playing this week who cares if they know that he is playing this week right let's worry about this 
this. Even if something leaked out, oh, Cam Rising's playing this week. This, who cares? Yeah. Like who? Who really cares? I don't. If if you're truly worried, like you're not worried about Vegas, don't worry about what people's are betting on the game. That's not your bag. If that information got leaked, who cares? We were so worried about that, we were distracted from the main mission. I, I, yes, yep. And so, like, us, finally, like, Cam's out, and we ain't, until further notice, we ain't playing this back-and-forth game again like we did last year. I like that they did that. I just felt like it was too late. Yeah. Right? And, and, and so there's that. And so every interview, it's Cam this, it's Cam this. We're not even worried about Isaac Wilson or what's going on. Like, this is a true freshman who's coming in here and, and, and helping us out. You know, you know what's interesting is, like, as you're talking about this, I can think back on the the weekly press conferences with with uh, with Kyle. I can't recall the last time we just asked him about the upcoming opponent. Like uh, uh, just a simple question like how hey, about that? Hey, what do you think of TC? What do you think of Houston? Yes. What do you think of yes. this? like I can't remember the last press conference we've had where it was just about ball, where it was just about all right, so th- th- those guys do this thing well. Right. How do you Take that away. Right. It hasn't been that because there's just been all of these other things that have taken away, f- mm-hmm. as you said, from the main mission. Right. And that's been, I think, the, the biggest issue, not just this season, but last the last two seasons. It just it dominates the conversation. And Utah just needs to find a way to get back to <laughs> winning. Focus yeah. on winning. You know, you know what? I'm sorry to say so much Steeler stuff, but that's just what I know, dang it. Hey, we love it. Watch how Mike Tomlin handles his interviews with this stuff. Russell Wilson's not available. No questions after that. All right? What's next? Y'all got any questions about this team we got coming up? We got the Ravens. You got anything? Like, And that's how he handles it. That's what Coach Witt needs to get back to. Mm. He's playing this game, too. Stop playing it. Yeah. Yeah. You're enabling it. Yeah. Stop playing it. Who cares? Stop. Coach Winningham knows who, what matters is the guys that are available to you today. Yep. If they want to play this NIL game, I want to do this, I want to transfer this, oh, I'm going to play this, yeah, yeah, yeah. who cares? Get out. Get out. Yeah. Coach Whittingham is one with two and three star guys. We've won with that. What is BYU winning with right now? Two and three star guys. The formula is still there. Yeah. It's working. <laughs> You're the one who's gotten away from the main thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. And you're causing your own gray hairs. You're causing your own frustrations. So get out of the way of that. Yeah. Get back to the hard-nosed football and guys that want to, because there's guys that want to be there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of guys. There's guys, that, and there's guys that don't. If you don't, at this point, four and four, if you don't want to be there, get out. I'm telling you, there's talent on this football team. There's opportunity. Even if guys want to enter the transfer portal, they want to get tape, right? So they want to be there. They can't just enter the portal and we got no tape. So work hard. Yep. Simple as that. That's why I would play. I was like, look, even if you guys are going to get in the transfer portal, you need some tape, right? Let's play like a Let's team. Play. Yeah. Let's and get, get you out tape. there and do it. Yep. I'm telling you, I, I, I tell people, I'm just like, there is so many alumni that are watching this, judging this because we can that would give their left testicle to play another play. Yeah. With these new jerseys, these new facilities, oh, you know, yeah. the new South End the Zone. Nice locker rooms. The nice locker rooms, you know, uh, the NIL. Um, of course the NIL. Right. But, there's, but that aside, there are so many guys that would die to play another down. Yeah. Another game. And for you guys to think of anything less than that, football is not that is not just the NFL. It's college too now. Yep. It's not forever. There's guys who enter the transfer portal and don't get picked up. No. Yeah. And Very then you're true. done. Yep. What regret That's are it. you living with without that? There's no union in college football. Nope. So nobody's gonna help you. You just disregarded your whole scholarship, your whole uh, education. Now what are you gonna fall back on? That's a that's another one. You put all your eggs in one basket and that didn't turn out. What's your plan B and C? Not an education. You just you just forfeited your scholarship. Yeah. Man. Right? Yeah. And, and and so like get out of it. Stop playing that game. The formula works. You love Utah football is about tough, hard nosed guys. Right? That are committed. Guys yeah. like Steve Tate. Guys like Marquise Blair. Guys like Britton Covey. 
right? Guys that are just give it all, man. I love the game. Nate Orchard. I love Hunter Dimmick. Mm, Hunter. I love the game, guy. right? Yep. As crazy as it was, um, Trevor Riley, that's one of the craziest <laughs> dudes I know. But that guy right there, you go to war with. Yeah. Matt Martinez, 100%. you go to you go to war with guys like that. Isaac Asiata. 100%. Right? They put on for the University of Utah. Yep. Right? And that's the guys that you want in your room. One year in or not, this is what it is. You give it your all or you're out. It's simple. I ain't got time for games. That's my speech to the team. I ain't got time for games. Yeah. That's it's you guys are taking opportunity from other people right now because you want to play games. Yeah, I think that's great. Um man, it's it's been it's been interesting the last two years just with everything that's gone on, NIL, transfer portal. Right. That's that's the part of the coaching stuff that I don't envy, right? Like you can't control that. You know, in order to get guys in, you guys that want to be here, right? You're able to sign big checks, but like you can't pay for play. That's stupid. Sure. It just doesn't I work. Know, I know. It, it doesn't work, yeah. and that's the shitty, the crappy part about, you know, this NIL stuff. Yeah. It's so funny because we all know why these guys are getting paid, but it's not pay for play. But we but we know why they're getting paid. You know? Right. It, like, right. come on. But it doesn't, but the contracts, your contracts aren't worked out like they're that. Not, I know. I and know it sucks. Not. Yeah. But I think that'll change. I do think that's going to change it's, on the horizon. Of course. Here's the thing. It's just like any collective bargaining agreement, anything that happens, you need info. Yep. Right. Anytime the NFL goes into a lockout, you know, these owners have done uh, they're letting things get crazy. And then the next time that there's a contract uh, up, we have this. This is what we've got. These are examples. Right. We've paid these guys and they suck. Now um, we need to we need the ability to not have so much guaranteed money. Yeah. Right. It's always back and forth. there yep. is. And and so all that comes in play with negotiations and stuff like that. And that's where this NIL stuff is going. All this, all these guys right now, you're just giving the business more info for them to lay their case. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to get paid, this is how it is. It's got to be. It, here's, you guys want to get paid, you guys need to be treated as employees. Right? Yeah. You know, you're letting the universities pay, the states, whatever, pay. If you're getting paid, it needs to be X, Y, Z. You're giving the business everything they need. The universities are probably just laughing right now. Just wait. As frustrated as they may seem, just wait until the business. I've said this for the last three years. Wait until the business takes over. Right now, the players got a lot of, a lot of freedom, a lot of freedom, a lot of control yeah. right now. Yep. It ain't for long because nope. they're not smart about it. Nope. It's it's coming, man. Like, yeah. It's, All right, it's the Wild Wild West. Is a lot of people have said it. It's coming. Yeah. Be ready. And uh, well, be ready, whatever. You're just taking away from the younger guys. These high school guys that are going to college, they're going to have to suffer. It's true. But this, these guys in this four-year, five-year span that is in this NIL, whatever, eat. Right? Yeah. That's the NCAA, billions and billions of dollars, sacrificing three to four years of some shared revenue. They're still getting their money, so yeah, whatever. They're fine. They're fine. Yeah. But like they letting chaos happen for three to four years so they can set up the future for the next fifty years. And it's yeah, it's it's with this house resolution. There's going to be things implemented yeah. next summer, as soon as next summer, hopefully. I shouldn't say hopefully, but you know, eventually. And then beyond that, it's just going to continue to become more and more a thing like this, where you know this back and forth yeah. tug of war between players and the business side, and that's well, just they're going to give more control to the individual university. And that's who needs to be regulated because, you know, yes. SMU, uh, actually, actually, I'm not going to say any Texas school, North Dakota or uh, what's a what's a good school? Let's just say um, Wyoming, Wyoming, right? Not a good school. Wyoming okay. is nothing like a USC. No, nothing right. At all. You can get a lot more money at USC than you can get Wyoming. Yeah. But there's going to be individual regulation to where the business, a.k.a. the university is going to have all the control over that. Everybody's going to try to squeeze into USC because they got a big budget. Not everybody's going to play. And the business will take over and they'll have a plan for that. And the business will be just fine. These players are going to suffer because everybody's going to try to get into USC and they can't. Man. It's crazy, dude. College. This is college football. This is crazy. Oh, man. Hey, it's it's life. We're, we're forever evolving. We, just, we are. We just got to understand what's coming yep. and adjust. Yep. Utah didn't do that this year. Unfortunately, right. 
Um, man, Sly, this has been great. Uh, We're gonna just, end and not talk about Holy War. Oh, you want to? I figured next week maybe. Oh, well, let's talk right, about it. We let's, can come let's, back next week. We, you want to come back next week? <laughs> you want to come back next week? Uh, or do you want to? Let me let thoughts? me check my schedule. I got a lot of crap to talk I about. Know, my I know. My, I, I yeah, figured, we can save it for next week. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> we'll do that. Um, man, Sly, again, appreciate you so much for carving out an hour to do this with me. We've been able to hit on a number of different things that I I think will resonate with the people that listen to to the podcast that mm-hmm. I think you know need to be to be said and and I hope that you know that things things are able to turn around obviously we all want that we all want Utah to succeed we all want them yeah, to ride we do. the ship and and get back to what we know this program is capable of and that's you know winning on a consistent basis and performing and executing at a consistent basis as well and I think that's just where everybody is at with this is they just want the the Utah football program that we've seen over the last couple of years that made the that that scaled the mountain that fought those battles that you know got to where it was where they finally made it to the Pac-12 championship everybody just wants that same sort of fight in this Utah program again right, right? and I think that's that's what we need and I, I think we've been able to you've been able to share a lot of opinions and thoughts and and insights that I think will will resonate with a lot of people and I appreciate you appreciate you for for sharing them man man no problem um this is awesome I, i'm you know it's so hard to get these thoughts out on the tv yeah right it's so quick even in radio everything's time so like being on the show i'm able to like to let it out even though of course i could talk all day as i said <laughs> um i appreciate this and uh thanks for having me on um you know thank it's getting colder so Oh, yeah. um, I wanted to make sure that you are, oh, are ready to go. Bro. Got you some Utah man gear. Hey, man. <laughs> no. Hey, God. you're you're a real Utah man, and so I I, oh, I know man. you you gotta be you gotta be strapped with some Utah man yeah, gear. Yeah, dude, I appreciate this. We gotta we gotta get some of this more. We gotta get more of this out there. Hey, it's it's coming. It's been a work in progress. You know, I want to do things the right way. Uh, the university's been so good to me, so I want to make sure that I I, awesome. I do right by them and and handle things the way it should be. Uh, so I've been working with the licensing department, you know, uh, partnered with Under Armour, partnered with New Era, um, you know, uh, working with the bookstore. Uh, oh, the football do. team's not doing well, so they're not going to be buying as much. Um, yeah. it, it, football drives the ship, man. It does. And so, uh, but uh, I'll be working with Shields, uh, working with a lot of places to get that. I'm at my online store. Uh, we'll be up here in a few weeks. Um, awesome. But it, it, it'll be great, man. Yeah, dude. We will absolutely pump this out for you. We'll... The Utah man. Yeah. Love it, dude. It's what we are. Love it, dude. All right, dude. Um, (laughs) Excited for you. Excited for that. You are always working on something, man. And it's it's been cool to watch you, like I said earlier. It's been cool to watch your evolution here locally in in the state of Utah and just what you're doing, everything that you've uh, got your hands on and just what you're working on. It's been so cool. So appreciate you, man, so much. Uh, And uh, we'll wrap this one up. This is the Utah Blockcast signing off.